And this is why we attack Mormon doctrine. Now, I know Latter-day Saints who are humble people. I know many of them who are more humble than I would ever hope to be. I'm not saying every Mormon is arrogant, but the spirit of arrogance and pride passes down, and let me show you why, all right? I'm going to show you why in chronological doctrinal order. First of all, their view of matter. Matter has always existed, and matter could not be created even by God in Mormon doctrine. So matter, who we are, physically and in our spirit, Joseph Smith taught that our spirit, our souls are made of matter. We have always existed, and God himself could not create us. He could form us, but he could not create us, because God cannot create matter. So we are co-eternal, co-existing eternally with God. That starts us off thinking arrogantly. All right, This is Mormon doctrine. I hope Mitt Romney covers this stuff on the presidential campaign. All right, And then we go to God. God was once a man. They say that's not true. Every single faithful Latter-day Saint believes it. They believe he progressed. He was once a man who had a father who went on and he obtained wives. And, this, and God progressed to the point where he became God. All right? And God is, is under the rule of something called eternal laws and principles. God has to obey these laws and principles. He's forced to. He doesn't originate them. They have always existed. So it demeans God and it brings him down to a guy who was once just like we are. And then we go to Jesus, a created being. Jesus is a created being just like us, a spirit being before this world was just like you and I. And we were all spirit brothers and sisters, along with Lucifer, a spirit brother with us. And there was a grand council, and Lucifer said, I don't like this. And he became Satan, and he fell, and all, a third was cast out. And Jesus was the shiny one, said, I want to go down there and save, save this world from sin. And so God the Father, who had progressed from a man, said, okay, do it. And so our elder brother came down, and he did it. But it lowers Jesus down to somebody just like us again. So we have no reverence. We have no awe. For a created Savior who says he was God, not, not the LDS. All right, and then we come to Adam and Eve. They jumped out here. Adam and Eve did a good thing by disobeying God. They looked at the whole circumstance and said, God gave us a commandment, but I know better. I know what needs to happen here in order for us to progress so that we can become a God someday too. So they disobeyed in the garden, and the LDS claimed that that was a fall upward that that was a great thing because it allowed their eyes to open to see good and evil, and now the whole world can be filled with people and the whole plan of salvation become an effect because they were disobedient to a commandment God gave them, and God, wink, wink, wanted them to disobey him. Okay, and, and it's taking power into your hand, and then we come to salvation. You know, they say we're saved by, uh, by uh, grace after all that we can do. So a, an LDS person has to take their salvation into their own hands. They are responsible for preparing themselves to become a God, to be exalted. And so they spend all kinds of time. And guess what? There's a cream that rises to the top in that church. And they have the genetic makeup and they have all the right serotonin levels. And they were raised in the right environments. And so they can walk around very peacefully and, and beautifully. And they get the leadership positions. And they think they're going to be exalted. And so this arrogance started. And you get quotes like Brigham Young and Joseph Smith backing it up, and they believe this stuff. And then we come to the ultimate. Man, it worships man. It's a church for man. It's to take man from being down here and to have him go step by step until man becomes a god. This is what Mitt Romney should be teaching. Because the final result is pure, unadulterated arrogance. All of it is built on pride. And uh, that is the antithesis of what the gospel of Jesus Christ taught us, doesn't it? You know, let's look up one scripture, 1 Corinthians 1.27. Grab your Bibles, 1 Corinthians 1.27.28. Listen to this. We'll end with this. We'll go to the phones, uh, 801-973-TV20, 801-973-8820. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. Listen to this, please. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. And the base things 
the base things of the world and things which are despised and God chosen yea the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are why I added why verse 29 that no flesh no flesh should glory in his presence it's uh, there are verses that are absolutely in opposition to the attitude of arrogance and pride that Joseph brought to um, Nauvoo. Uh, ran for president, we talked about, and now uh, we're going next week, after we talk about Mitt Romney, to Carthage, and we're going to tell you all the facts about Carthage, and then we're going to talk about how Joseph was shot and killed. And then we're going to move into 2008, and we're going to continue on studying church history from Nauvoo after Joseph's been killed through Brigham Young up to the current day and the first Tuesday of every month of 2008 we're going to spend covering a famous church talk and we're going to do 10 famous church talks in chronological order with the uh, a very terrible talk down to the most unbelievable talk ever given 